Okay, there is another way to look at uh, how net zero and generally the climate action uh, may be affected by uh, the pandemic or, in other words, how the pandemic exposes our weakness to return to uh, the old ways, right? So we have already mentioned several times that despite the n negotiations going on for 25 years, the actual global emissions do not show a dip uh, so far, except for when you have things like the oil crises or financial crises, and of course the latest one being the pandemic, which brought the uh, economies down to a halt and uh, obviously, government started to worry uh, about recovering from the slowdown. So, a lot of uh, stimulus funds and recovery funds have been invested by government. So, this podcast is on looking at those to see what they may mean for net zero or, in general, our global warming targets. So, we have seen this before where the Global Carbon Project uh, projected 2021 uh, emissions to be uh, roaring back to normal uh, for the pre to the pre-pandemic levels and the question is whether the growth rates uh, can be uh, kept low while as coming out of the pandemic after having dropped during the pandemic um, and of course there is always optimistic ways to look at it so climate analytics talks about how green stimulus uh, to fight covid-19 economic crisis and the climate crisis uh, strong climate policies uh, plus sustained investment can provide valuable jobs, revitalize economies and get the world on track to meet the 1.5 degree C agreement goal. So we are still thinking it's possible. So if you look at the global greenhouse gas emissions, again in gigaton CO2 equivalent per year, remember this is converting non-CO2 greenhouse gases to equivalent CO2 using uh, global warming potential and their concentration. So here is the historical emissions including uh, land use uh, and land use uh, climate forcing and there are uh, where we were uh, as of uh, 2019 and then how the uh, slowdown happened and then uh, where we have to go to be consistent with two degrees uh, so you would have to be starting to draw down already which is not happening and 1.5 degrees C is even harder because the drawdown would be would be much steeper especially if you want to aim for 2030 goals consistent with the 1.5 degree C target for 2100 with 66% uh, probability. Uh, Paris targets are out there so pre-COVID, COVID-19 current policies are uh, up here as well. So if you look at post-COVID-19 response impact on emissions uh, expected by 2030 from policy plus sustained investments over 2020 to 2030 which will give us a, a, a baseline for looking at the report from uh, UNEP that I'll show next. So rebound to fossil fuels uh, what do we have to do? Post-COVID current policies uh, are down here uh, no change in green investments and no fossil fuel investments would give us uh, emissions gaps of here uh, about 20 gigaton CO2 equivalent. Uh, weak green stimulus would bring us down uh, to here. Moderate green stimulus uh, would bring us here to 32 to 35 gigaton CO2 equivalent. This is 40 to 44. This is 50 to 56. This is 55 to 61. Uh, gigaton CO2 equivalent and if you want to stay here on target for 1.5 then you need very strong uh, green stimulus funds bringing us down to 24 to 27 gigaton CO2 equivalent per year so uh, the investment increase would be 1.5 per 1.2% uh, in green investment and minus 0.4% decrease in uh, fossil fuel investment. So each one of these scenarios has a uh, number associated with the increase needed for green investments to go in these directions and the decrease needed in further investments in fossil fuels. Uh, are we going there? Well, if you look at the uh, uh, actual uh, path we are on, so obviously COVID impacted a lot of people, people forced into poverty by millions, 
de depending on which poverty line you used. Uh, there is the Gini increase, which is basically the Gini index uh, measure of for the distribution of income or sometimes consumption expenditure between individuals within an economy compared to a perfectly equal distribution. So it is an indicator of the uh, inequalities that exist and how poor people can get affected more by things like climate impacts or in this case the pandemic. So you can see that uh, the 2% Gini increase 105 million, 5% uh, increase 106, uh, 62 million and 5% Gini increase 266 million when you look at uh, the poverty line of uh, under two dollars per day and the poverty line increasing to dollar 320 per day would take us uh, to these numbers in terms of the Gini increases or the uh, people pushed into poverty in terms of their ability to buy and uh, consume things okay so how did the uh, how has the recovery funding gone if we look at emerging markets and developing economies uh, EMDEs so they include 26 countries representing 31 trillion in global GDP so you look at spending in US uh, billion dollars uh, over uh, 2020 so global announced COVID-19 spending through 2020 cumulative so you obviously increasing over here and you split that into uh, funding that's not clear so it's somewhere down here in gray rescue spending so that's that uh, in terms of uh, just recovering the economy and so on and recovery spending so that's up there so uh, the definitions of rescue and recovery fundings are of course different, uh, distinct because rescue funding is to just uh, rescue the economy, recovery is to bring the growth rates back to what they were before. So advanced economies, 24 countries representing 51 trillion in GDP, they spent more on everything uh, that goes into unclear rescue spending and uh, recovery spending. So rescue spending often went into airlines that were getting hammered or other businesses and so on. Airlines comes to mind as one good example and recovery spending is also higher for of course advanced uh, economies. If you look at long-term public debt and long-term private debt and short-term uh, debt here, you can compare the past uh, decade or so, 15 years, to see how new spending in response to COVID occurred. Okay, so massive jump here compared to the past few years. There is somewhat of an increasing trend, but this jump is obviously related to COVID-19 new spending. This is like looking for excess debts to uh, estimate debts due to COVID because you don't always have records of how people died. But if you look in a particular pandemic year, if the number of deaths exceeds beyond a threshold compared to the past few years of expected number of deaths per year, then you get a handle on that. So this is the new spending due to COVID. You can look at total recovery funding. So recovery spending over the course of the pandemic with total green spending described by sector and country. So recovery spending in the US was proposed to be huge, lots of negotiations and some form of it sub, uh, survives, but within that climate action was proposed to be uh, included. And you can see that there is some uh, total green recovery fund uh, spent, uh, US dollar 341 billion out of these trillions of dollars. And you can see what are the countries included in there. South Korea is doing well, Spain, Germany, United Kingdom, uh, China, France, Japan, and others. Um, basically, you can see that the recovery, most of the non-green recovery fund uh, going into infrastructure, employment creation, aviation, or even uh, transportation modes that uh, are not public transportations, which would uh, reduce emissions and so on, are not a big chunk of uh, the total spending. So in other words, we are heading right back to business as usual. We want the economies to recover from the pandemic destructive impact but that doesn't mean the new spending is going to focus on 
climate action and green uh, funding, right? So if you look here at total recovery spent in terms of the uh, fraction of your, uh, GDP and in US billion dollars, uh, billions of dollars in US uh, currency, uh, type of market, advanced economies that we talked about and emerging markets and developing economies or EMDs, uh, green recovery funding here, you are on the axis where the funding is much less green over here and more green over here and on this axis you have recovery spending being less or more. You expect rich countries to be uh, spending uh, more on recovery and hopefully more towards green, right? So you can see that on this axis with more spending but more green spending, current leaders are Finland, Denmark, Norway, Germany, France and Poland. Okay, not US, not Canada, not Australia and so on. And here is uh, Turkey's early promise showing wanting 100% green, Switzerland, Canada, Ireland are here. They spent for recovery, but green funding is not that high. Potential to act. United States is here. Um, India, Pakistan, Italy, Israel, Sweden, and so on here. And many countries are considered uh, missing potential to act here and missing opportunities uh, if you are here. So South Korea, Spain, UK, Japan, China, and so on. Another way to look at it is to look at Human Development Index, which is an index that says how the society is doing in terms of uh, children's education, women's health, per capita GDP, access to various things like healthcare, and so on and so forth. So if you look at total spend as a percentage of GDP, again, for advanced economies and EMDs, and recovery spent as a percentage of GDP to represent the circles. You can see that low HDI and moderate spending flexibility uh, countries are down here and the richer countries with blue colors are uh, here with uh, various percentages of GDP spending. So high HDI countries are spending relatively more compared to the low HDI countries uh, down here. Okay, so high HDI and greater spending flexibility exists here. Again, the question is how much of that is green? So if you look at green recovery spent in a percentage of GDP for uh, advanced economies and EMDs, again in terms of a percentage of GDP, uh, and you look now in terms of CO2 emission intensity, so kilogram per GDP uh, per dollar of GDP in, term, uh, in terms of the 2017 purchasing power, par power parity where the currencies are equalized to make different countries comparable uh, with some exchange rates and so on and so forth. And of course bad news is that China has high CO2 emission intensity and its green recovery fun uh, spending is uh, quite low. Uh, Poland as we saw is up here and Spain is up here uh, in terms of green recovery spent and its CO2 emission intensity is low. South Korea is also relatively low with high green recovery spent and the rest of the countries are here. So some countries have higher uh, CO2 emissions and lower green recovery funds, especially surprising to see Norway here but there are many from EMD countries which are of course uh, down here. So this gives you a sense maybe to uh, shame countries into spending more uh, of the recovery funds on green uh, recovery or you put some kind of a peer pressure towards their own net zero goals. So obviously all this has an implication for net zero considering US uh, has announced 2050 target, China 2060, India 2070, I think Sweden is at 2035 or so and so on and so forth, right? Maybe 2045, please check, okay? So where are the uh, fundings going? So conditional liquidity support, electronic appliance and efficiency incentives, clean transport infrastructure, building upgrades and new green housing, clean research and development, EVs, green worker, retraining and job creation, which turns out to be very critical to sell climate action in countries like the US, where people are generally, some parties are generally opposed 
there are only two parties, so opposed to uh, spending on climate action. Clean energy infrastructure investment, natural infrastructure and green spaces, unspecified and green market creation. So this is for advanced economies who spent more and uh, EMDEs which spent less, only $51, but they also spent more on uh, let's say clean transport infrastructure uh, t -t -t no clean energy infrastructure so wind and uh, solar and here the blue color which is natural infrastructure and green spaces I think okay so priorities are different amounts uh, or flexibility they have in terms of investing in recovery is smaller uh, and yet uh, doesn't mean rich countries are putting relatively more into green recovery as compared to poorer countries. So we have to consider uh, energy intensity of the GDP, CO2 carbon intensity of the energy, recovery funding spent, percentage of that spent on green and see how they will affect the net zero targets. Uh, in addition to, of course, the global warming targets of 2 degrees C and 1.5 degrees C. Overall, the pandemic has not been good news in terms of our ability to stay focused on climate action. Any small perturbation to the system, well, pandemic was not small in terms of more than 6 million people who uh, died and many who got pushed into poverty, many who are left with long-term COVID effects and so on. But this is a good metaphor for how uh, natural hazards and other uh, hazards in fact compounded by climate change like the pandemic will negatively influence climate action especially net zero goals okay that's why I wanted to include this uh, podcast here okay <laughs>